What's going on, y'all? This is Mike Brown, and this is The Art of Letting Go. Today, we have a special guest. I'm in her building. Her name is Trudy. She is a friend, a hip-hop connoisseur. I would say you're a hip-hop connoisseur. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> um, she is a healer for sure um reiki massage one of the best i've ever experienced and i'm not even saying that because you're my friend like that's what brought me here to have this conversation with you is to talk (laughs) about reiki um i had heard about it before and about balancing your chakras and stuff like that but i never i never knew what any of that meant you know i'm not from california i'm from texas so, you know, initially all the energy talk and all that kind of stuff to me was like, ah, oh, that's some bullshit. But after being out here for a while and being on my own journey, I really recognize like it's real. You know, it's very real um, keeping your energy in check. And um, you definitely did that for me. But first of all, how are you doing? I know I've been talking, I've been like just talking and rambling, but how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm feeling feeling good. Feeling relaxed. <laughs> that's what's up. That's what's up. <laughs> Happy to have you here. I have I'm the one with the special guest in the building right now. <laughs> you know what? I'm happy to be here. Like you and it's funny that you kind of set the vibe for me cuz when I walked in, you had the incense, you had some sonic playing. <laughs> 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 Sonic 2, son. Yes. Sonic 2. <laughs> <laughs> that's too funny. But for somebody that's not familiar with familiar with Reiki, how would you describe it to them? So basically what Reiki is is um alternative Japanese um healing technique. Um so it's it's basically energy work. Yeah. And what that really means is like um i basically channel reiki energy which is the universal life force energy or cosmic energy yeah um through my hands and onto a person and i work through their body work through their different energy fields their chakras um as well as the physical uh, physical body um and it really helps to get to the root cause of a problem whether it's um you know, mental, emotional, physical, or if need be, spiritual. Um, we we tend to live in like a really stressful environment. Very, very. <laughs> you know, especially these days with everything, like being busy with work and school. Traffic. And traffic. <laughs> and just society and all the changes that we're going through. Right. <laughs> um, Reiki is like a really, really powerful tool to help maintain uh, balance and to actually kind of clear out things, whether again, whether it's mental, spiritual, emotional or physical. Um, and for me, it's helped me work through a lot of like my past traumas. Yeah. Um, a lot of um even just like physical things um, and help me connect to myself on a deeper level of consciousness. That's really dope. (laughs) And, you know, as you were talking, I was thinking about my session and um, just going into it open and not even knowing what to expect. Like it really blew my mind how you were able to, without even touching me, feel parts of my body where I may have been having pain or, you know, I guess an example I can use is my sinuses have been giving me headaches. And the first thing you said was, have you been having headaches? And you put a stone on my head and no BS, like my head instantly stopped hurting. Because it was hurting before I came in. And that that blew my mind, even with my stomach, you know, 
I don't really talk about it a whole lot, but um, I have IBS and um, usually caused by stress and just my diet and stuff like that. But I know for a fact I've never told you that. Mm -hmm. And you put your hands over my stomach and you were like, have you been having stomach issues? Mm -hmm. And for me, I guess I'm just curious to know, how did you know? (laughs) Like, I. You know, I don't I don't even know any other way to ask it than to be that direct. <laughs> <laughs> I just knew. No, I um, to be honest with you, I'm very intuitive. Yeah. Um, especially with the body, um, which is actually kind of why I got into like massage and and Reiki and stuff. Um, growing up, I I'm West Indian. Um, I'm from Trinidad and in trinidad we have healers like we i grew up with this type of work yeah um and since i'm indo trinidadian like indian trinidadian we have our own like i call them like the hindu healers yeah um you know say like you have things going on we'd go to the woman who literally lives in this house on a hill like wow type healers you know um and she would do like little rituals for us and if i was having something small like even just like a headache or something she would do like these like rituals and basically heal us wow um i've been to other healers especially down there in the caribbean you know spirituality and healing is like very prominent down there with like interwoven in all the cultures yeah and especially in trinidad it's like heavy Indian and African influences. So I just kind of grew up around that. Yeah. And um, uh, I living here in America, like pretty much my whole life, I moved here when I was three. Okay. Um, uh, you know, my parents kept a lot of those, my mom especially. <laughs> she would um, do some of these like healings yeah um so it's just like a natural thing for us and um i remember wanting to like get into massage therapy a while ago yeah but i got caught in the whole structure of like you know what i'm talking about like going to school and yeah same Mm -hmm. and that's funny because same thing happened to me with with music you know i've always been into it but school kind of tainted my perception of what it was supposed to be because there was a quote-unquote right way right. of doing things as opposed to the way that feels right right you know so i definitely understand <laughs> yeah it's like you go to high school and you go to college you pick a major and you yeah graduate with that and then like your rest of your life yeah but i i always had this deep thing with like healing work and i just never really paid attention to it until like i I had an awakening in 2011. Okay. Um, and that was like a very big thing. I was like at a crossroads in my life, basically. Um, and I was only like a couple years out of college. And um, I was like <laughs> working at a job that I wasn't very happy with. And, um, you know, even even just growing up, like I would, I don't know, I would just massage people. Yeah. <laughs> it was like like a natural thing that i just did um and like it definitely started with my dad wanting me to walk on his back i I laugh because my dad used to make us do the same thing i feel like everybody's dad like makes them walk on their back as a kid and then like okay well well this kid ended up being a massage therapist (laughs) thanks dad Shout out to dad. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was just kind of like always in me. And I've always been like intuitive and spiritual. I mean, that stuff is just running in my family. But yeah. I never like connected fully into it until I got older. Yeah. Yeah. So in 2011, I was like kind of at a crossroads. And I'm like, I don't know. Like, I don't know what is going on. <laughs> yeah um and i remember for my birthday um i have two sisters and both of them sent me a book oh wow both of them, like just randomly and one was about like energy healing and one was something about like 
Hindu gods or something. Wow. I was like, whoa, okay, cool. And like, I started reading them and like the, ener- the book about energy healing, like really resonated on such a deep level. And I actually went to Trinidad for the holidays that year and we were having like a big, like, um, they call it a, uh, like a puja, which is like a big prayer ceremony. Thing. Okay. So there was this, I was in this temple with my family and people from the village and like, we're doing this big puja thing. And I was so like new to the, that whole realm, even though I grew up doing that stuff. Yeah. Um, this time, you know, like I was like 24, 25, I started actually like opening up to it and being like, okay. (laughs) Um, and I remember reading these books and like resonating with it. And then being in that temple, um, something happened to me there. Oh, wow. I had a very deep. <laughs> so we're getting deep. <laughs> no, it's all good. It's all good. Um, I had a very deep transcendental experience. Wow. Yeah. Um, and I had just gone into meditation and all these things. And um, I remember being in the prayer ceremony and the pundit, which is basically like a Hindu priest, um, he was just starting the ceremony. And I was sitting there, and I, my sister was to my left, and like the rest of my family were like all to my left. And then yeah. like, the pundit was in front of me, and then like all the statues are around, whatever. And I'm like, all right, I'm just going in this meditation. And then all of a sudden, I just like, I tripped out. <laughs> Dang. I like remember like, the pundit just doing the opening prayers and I just got in like a, a zone basically. Um, and I remember opening my eyes and looking around and not seeing anyone. Wow. And the only thing that I saw was like, everything looked like space. (laughs) Yeah. Wow. Like I was literally looking around like, wait i know my sister's right here but all i'm seeing are like stars right now yeah and and like i was tripping out i'm like what the hell is happening to me yeah (laughs) and i was really connecting with one of the hindu gods in particular shiva yeah and it was it was a moment i don't know how to explain this (laughs) sorry trust me i Um, I think you explained it very well like i (laughs) <laughs> to me, because I'm I'm trying to, because I I shoot I don't know if I've ever said this on this podcast, but for me it felt like the first time I did shrooms. That's what it sounds like, right? Yeah. And even when I had the session with you, and I didn't smoke or anything before I came here, but I felt like I was having like a psychedelic experience, right? And um, like one of the biggest things that kept coming up for me were. And it was funny because you had mentioned my you had mentioned my dad, but my whole family kept coming up inside of me, and to trust myself was like the biggest like thing mm-hmm. that kept coming up right. every time I would like, because I I feel like we had did like a little meditation before maybe yes, yes. and I just drifted, <laughs> I was completely felt like just in another place, yeah. but when I was there, I kept everything that kept coming up was trust yourself music art trust yourself trust yourself trust yourself trust yourself and it was like wow like i needed that i really yeah. did I don't know, that was such a beautiful session by the way just i appreciate FYI. that <laughs> thank you thank you for it but yeah going back to that experience like yeah i mean we i i think like everybody at some point in their life like we have these experiences yeah you know i, I feel like in, in different ways for me it was in the temple and like when I had this experience, like this message kept coming to me, like you need to heal people, you need to heal people. And after like a few minutes, like I got out of it and I look over, I'm like, okay, I'm here. I'm in the temple. My sister's here. People are here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, okay, okay. Um, and it's so crazy because it was the end of December. It was like around Christmas time, 2011 and New Year's rolls in, you know, 2012 comes in. And the following week, I enrolled into massage school. Wow. (laughs) 
and I got in and they were just starting a session like classes like wow. two weeks after and so I basically kind of let me backtrack before I did that when I was home like before I left to come back here yeah I was massaging my dad again yeah <laughs> shout out to dad again <laughs> um <laughs> And as I was massaging him, he, like, spoke to me about it. Like, he's like, you're really, really good at this. He's like, you can, you should do this. And he actually really inspired me to. That's what's like, up. Just Shout hearing, out dad for real. Honestly, like, just hearing him say that. Yeah. It sparked everything in me. Wow. To, like. Does he know that? No. <laughs> I should tell him. Yeah, you definitely should. <laughs> That's cool. I'll, sh- I'll let him listen to this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah, then I, I, I enrolled in massage school and I just like, I, I was 25 years old. I just went right into it. Wow. And I went so hardcore. I didn't have weekends. I was so focused and so driven on the massage work and then learning. Yeah. And um, about a year later, like I finished massage school. And um, but while I was in massage school, I noticed like I was starting to have like all these experiences where yeah. like, I'm seeing colors and energy and picking up things like, you know, like intuitively. And um, then towards the end of my program, like uh, a few like clients were like saying, like, I feel like you, you should look into Reiki um, and you should like because like I, I feel like your hands get hot and these vibrations and whatnot. And I was yeah. Like, yeah. I'm like, it, like everything they were saying were, was like confirming my own things that were happening, but I wanted to learn more, you know, I didn't want to just like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Tell How> m- <laughs> Sorry to cut you off. No, it's cool. But how much actual touching is involved in Reiki? So Reiki is actually an, like you, you don't actually touch, but I, in my yeah. sessions I do, um, at times I, you know, I gauge my clients and yeah, I, and, and for me touch is because I'm a massage therapist, right. it's just like second nature, you know? Yeah. I mean? But actually, uh, Reiki, it's like non-touch. Right. So and you just kind of hover your hands over. I asked that because when you mentioned the heat, there definitely were points where I felt heat and felt like it was weird because it would feel like you would be like when you were at my knee. Mm hmm. I felt your hands on my knee, but then it felt like I was being touched upper as well. Mm -hmm. And like I said, it was just mind blowing. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I mean, and the the beauty about Reiki is that it like, I'm just the channel. I'm just, you know, I'm not the one doing the healing. It's like not coming from me. It's coming through me. Right. And the Reiki energy itself goes where it needs to go. Yeah. And, it's not me determining things. I just kind of, I'm there to help facilitate yeah. the healing where it needs to go. Um, and I'll, you know, just being intuitive and having that kind of gift, you know, through family practices, like spiritual practices growing yeah. up with that. It kind of like helped me tap into that more to not just help myself, but to help others. Yeah. Mm. Being that you are a healer, you know, because I, I feel like in my own ways I heal, you know. Uh, yes, you do. I appreciate that. <laughs> this podcast is very healing. <laughs> I appreciate that. I do. But being that you are a healer, where do you go for healing? That's a good question. <laughs> I am fortunate enough to have come across so many beautiful people in this practice different forms of healing Um, yeah and i'm so grateful for every you know everything um my reiki master himself (laughs) he's amazing okay (laughs) um but i also have like other you know there's a lot of really great people around especially around here in la yeah Um, so i but my best i guess place for healing is nature okay i love nature also i really do honestly like yeah when i need to recharge i'll like 
go to the f- f- drive to the forest or I'll yeah. go to the desert and go to Joshua Tree and Ooh. kick it on a rock <laughs> or I'll go jump in the ocean or, you know. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, blend of those things, just amazing, amazing healers and people that I've met along the way on my path and nature. <laughs> That's what's up. <laughs> That's so cool. Um... <laughs> is there anything else that you would like to share with the listeners? Um, I actually am going to be hosting a meditation. Okay. On Monday, August 12th. Okay. Um, it's at Mostly Angels, um, which is a little crystal shop right on Robertson. Just right off the 10. Um, so if anyone is interested in coming and just learning a little bit about Reiki and receiving a... Um, a group healing session i will be doing that on monday august 12th there you have it <laughs> where can the people find you trudy uh you could also f- yeah that's a yeah <laughs> so <laughs> instagram <laughs> bhakti bodyworks it's spelled b-h-a-k-t-i bodyworks b-o-d-y-w-o-r-k-s um, and then BhaktiBodyWorks.com. Okay. But yeah, just follow that, uh, that Insta. <laughs> <laughs> and I can give true testimony. She does real work. Like <laughs> definitely something that you would really, especially if you're in the Los Angeles area and you feel like, you know, if you feel a little off with your energy or if you feel like you just need some healing in general, um, I would say definitely connect with Trudy. Thank you. And I think people should be not afraid to explore this stuff because I agree. Are, you know, we're living in a time where things are so I, like there's just so much, you know, yeah. and it's it's so beneficial to take time out to like really check in, um, you know, not just like what's going on, like energetically, but even physically, too. Like it's, it's all connected. Absolutely. You know, our emotions, our thoughts mental process and you know we we go through things in life and these things stay in our bodies and it's really important to look at that and start healing before it manifests into something physical that's real that's so real I appreciate you being on the show. I really do. Uh, thank you. I appreciate you having me on the show. And I appreciate <laughs> you uh, nerding out with me to Sonic 2 yes. soundtrack. <laughs> Just FYI, if you come and get a session from me, you might hear some video game music. Yes. <laughs> we, we, really, we really had like a nice long moment about Sonic. That was cool. I appreciate that. Yes. Music is the... I met you at a music event. So that's why it's so cool. <laughs> like, you know, that's why I said... Hip hop aficionado. <laughs> <laughs> Hip hop healer. <laughs> yes. Right. For real. I do I do throw in some I love yeah. <laughs> I do I spend a lot of time making my playlist for my healing sessions, so <laughs> Hey the the love is definitely felt. Like the the effort is definitely felt put into it. Like I know I know I appreciated mine for sure. <laughs> Thank you, Trudy. Thank you. Really appreciate that. Thank you. If you guys would like to follow this podcast, follow me. You can find me at Just Mike Brown on all social media, primomiguel.com for all artistic endeavors. Um, Like, subscribe, share this podcast. Let us know what you think. How do you feel about Reiki? Have you done it before? What are your thoughts? This is The Art of Letting Go. Peace. (laughs) if you enjoyed this week's episode of the art of letting go please be sure to like subscribe and share this podcast wherever you listen to this podcast if you would like to follow the art of letting go you can find us at the art of letting go podcast on all social media you can also reach out to us at the art of letting go podcast at gmail.com if you'd like to find me, Mike Brown, you can find me at Just Mike Brown on all social media and PrimoMiguel.com for all my artistic endeavors. Thank you for listening to this week's episode, and I'll see you next week.